Hey everyone, Felix from Nintendo Life here, and today we're here to review Persona 4 Golden for the Nintendo Switch. These words were written by the stupendous Mitch Vogel and converted into video by... <gasps> it's me! Although Shin Megami Tensei is technically the flagship RPG franchise over at Atlas, it's the spin-off Persona series that has made huge strides in finding mainstream appeal in recent years. And yes, while Persona 5 may have done most of the heavy lifting, Persona 4 Golden, the enhanced re-release of the PlayStation 2 Classic, was also an instrumental part in getting the series on the map. Part of the benefit of being released on the tragically doomed hardware of the Vita meant that it was much easier to stand out from the slim crowd of games on the platform, and Persona 4 Golden was quickly labelled as one of the must-buys for the platform. After stronger than expected sales results from its sudden Steam release in 2020, Persona 4 Golden has now found its way for the Switch, and we are pleased to report that it's still a thoroughly delightful RPG. So in Persona 4 Golden you play as a city-dwelling silent protagonist who moves to the royal town of Iniba to live with his uncle and cousin for a year while his parents are away for work. And while your character seems to adjust well to his new life, things are tense to say it mildly around the town as there is a serial killer on the loose who's constantly evading the police. Your character and his newfound friends then quickly get wrapped up in this mystery when they discover the Midnight Channel, a mysterious other world that can be accessed by crawling through a, well, TV screen. The killer is using the Midnight Channel and its abundant population of shadows to murder his victims, but your party soon realizes that they can battle the shadows using their personas and free the victims before it's too late. You and your friends thus set out to save the killer's victims while also stringing together clues to try and deduce who the killer is. Despite the rather intense premise, this game's narrative feels notably light-hearted, which in turn makes its darker moments all the more of a gut punch when they happen. There's some very real emotional events to be experienced in this story, and much of their weight is due to the increased focus on character development. Though previous Persona games certainly featured strong characters, it feels like this game places much more importance on fleshing out each member of the investigation team, with individual arcs while also taking the time to highlight more small mundane moments between them. These little moments add up as it elevates the cast from feeling like party members and more like friends and people with real depth to them. This greater focus on relationships and character development makes the plot much more gripping. Gameplay follows the standard Persona formula of mixing together social sim elements and traditional JRPG gameplay, and it's executed here brilliantly. Though your character may be a badass supernatural warrior, they're also a high school student first. The demands of studying and socializing don't go away just because the killer kidnaps another victim. Thus, you spend most of your weeks attending school, participating in clubs, hanging out with your friends, and working part-time jobs. Often these activities will boost various social stats and traits like intelligence or vigilance, allowing you to better relate to various people in your character's life. This is especially important, given that many characters feature social links that greatly enhance both the story, but also gameplay. And each character's social link will progress an optional sub-narrative centered around them, and progressing to each new step in their story will grant you benefits in finding and fusing personas that you use for your dungeon exploration. It's not possible to max out every character's social link in one playthrough without sticking to a strict schedule, so you have to ultimately pick and choose which characters you want to get close to. This is a larger mechanic of managing the life sim side of the game, as your character has limited amount of time to spend on any given activity each day. Most days you're stuck in school till the early afternoon, so you only have time for one major activity before night comes. It's up to you whether to spend your time exploring the latest dungeons, hanging out with a friend, or studying in the library for the upcoming exam. Usually there's no wrong answers about what you should do next, but there's always a give and take to whatever you choose to do. Luckily, there is an online option that help you give some guidance on what might be the best option. When your character gets some free time, you can connect to the Vox Populi online feature to get tips on what other players choose to do with a day in their playthrough, or what personas they choose to fuse. It's like giving you the benefits of a written or video internet guide without taking away the autonomy and magic of experiencing the game yourself. So, when you choose to go into the next dungeon, things unfold as you expect from a turn-based RPG. You explore labyrinth environments laden with enemies to fight and treasures to seek, culminating in a tough boss fight at the end to cap things off. 
Though dungeons are still procedurally generated like in Persona 3 Portable, their implementation here feels much more pleasant thanks to the highlighted focus on tailoring each one to the story. Every dungeon is thematically linked to the victims contained within, which gives each one its own identity. And these never overstay their welcome. Dungeons are only about a dozen floors or less here, which means that they end almost exactly as you start feeling the floors are blending together. Combat follows the same one more turn-based system that Persona fans has come to love, which push players to be strategic in how they dismantle enemies' teams. The goal of most encounters is to identify enemy elemental weaknesses and use the correct attacks to exploit them. But there's an additional layer to be considered with resource management. There are very few ways to replenish SP, which is what you use for most special attacks, so you must consider how a cast will affect not only just your battle, but also your general run on the dungeon for the day. You can't reasonably explore higher floors if a couple of characters' SP reserves are tapped out, so making sure that you reasonably pace yourself is important to ensure you reach the boss quickly enough and with characters who are well equipped to handle the fight. Between dungeon runs and when you're out and about after school, you'll often visit the Valid Room to forge a better team of Personas for yourself. While all your party members in combat only have access to one Persona, your character is a wildcard who can host multiple Personas at once. Each Persona comes with its own mixture of stats, elemental affinities, and skills. And the best way to get the most powerful ones comes from fusing them in the Valid Room. Doing so will cause you to lose the Personas you used as fodder, but this is often a fair trade, given that you're usually trading up for something better. This is especially true if you've been mindful about keeping up your social links, as these will grant big experience and stat boost to many new Personas that make them even more powerful right out of the gate. Luckily, one improvement made to the golden release of Persona 4 was the ability to manually choose which skills the new Persona would inherit from those being fused. There are some restrictions in place, but this allows you much greater control over shaping your team and greatly reduces the headache of leaving this critical aspect of team building to chance. Manual skill inheritance isn't the only improvement being brought to Persona 4 Golden either. There are all sort of new tweaks to this version, both big and small. Changes like being able to do more activities at night open up more options to managing your time efficiency, while new social links, personas, and an extra late game dungeon adds much more to do and see compared to the original PlayStation 2 release. Unlike its predecessors' final versions, which were each incomplete in their own ways, Persona 4 Golden easily proves itself to be the definitive way to experience Persona 4. Visually, this game shows its age a bit due to the simplistic models utilized for most characters and enemies, but there's still plenty to love about the offbeat and occasionally bizarre art design of many enemies. On the other hand, the characters' images in the dialogue look incredibly clean and bright in contrast to the somewhat muted 3D visuals. And while Persona 5 is easily the most stylish entry in the series, Persona 4 Golden still manages to show bits of that characteristic flair in things like the over-the-top attack animations and smooth menu transitions. So yeah, this might not be exactly a looker by today's standards, but it's perfectly acceptable for a quick and dirty port of a Vita game. Plus, this all runs without any noticeable frame drops. To match the general tone, the soundtrack features a potent mixture of pop and rock tracks to help set that bouncy atmosphere and keep things light. Though there are some tracks present here that get a little irritating from sheer repetition, the sheer catchiness is hard to resist. Over 10 years later, Persona 4 Golden remains a thoroughly enjoyable and engrossing RPG that, for the most part, has stood the test of time. Although its visuals might be a bit dated, the gameplay and story presented here do more than enough to justify the purchase, while all the tweaks and additions that came with this Golden Edition round out most of the rougher edges from the initial PlayStation 2 release. If you're looking to give the Persona series a shot, Persona 5 Royal is a good place to start, but Persona 4 Golden is an excellent entry in the series and one that we recommend you picking up when you can. We here at Nintendo Live give Persona 4 Golden on the Nintendo Switch a 9 out of 10. If you like this video, why don't you summon your persona and click that subscribe button. And don't forget to check out our website nintendolive.com for all sorts of Nintendo related content like reviews in written form. Stay safe, play some persona games, and I'll see you in the next one. Felix from Nintendo Life, out. Oh,